We're here at AirVenture and we're out looking for new stuff that people like to watch on YouTube video and in other places. I'm Dan Johnson, talking with Mark Kittering, and we found an engine that we don't know enough about. So Mark, uh, what is it we've got here? Where does this engine come from? Well, it's a Suzuki G13BB that we buy brand new direct from the factory. And we from do, Suzuki? From Suzuki. Okay. Yep, and we use all brand new parts. We buy long blocks and build it up ourselves. And we build our own redrive here and our own mount system. And we do the ECU to um, mainly to remove the limp home mode, which is very notorious problem with a lot of the auto conversions. I don't know what that means. What does that mean, that word? Uh, what happens is that auto engines, when they have a fault, like it overheats, they reduce the power, ah. usually to about 2,000 RPMs. Well, if you're on takeoff, you don't that want That would not that. be a good thing. Not a good thing. So you yank that part out, or what do you do? Uh, we reprogram it so it does ah. not have that. Now you said electron control unit. Yes, it uses... Uh, and so that's where you do that adjustment? Yes. Okay, continue on. Uh, the ECU is Bosch. Um, they claim a 20,000 hour mean time between failure. So it's single ignition, but uh, with the electronic control system, it still has less chance of failing in any given half hour period than both magnetos at the same time. Ah, wow, okay, well that's an interesting statement because we're so used to, in aviation, dual ignition, dual, 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 for redundancy. Yes. You're saying the whole electronic control unit side of, or, or aspect of things is changing that game a bit. Absolutely. Uh, the legacy magnetos are a fantastic item. The, most of the certified people are replacing it today. Uh, the redundancy was necessary back then, or when you used a mechanical magneto. You had to have redundancy because the thing was going to fail. Yes. One of them, anyway. Yeah, every 600 hours. That's the mean time between failure. Wow. So, 600 hours to 20,000 hours. Correct. The comparison that you're making here. Yeah. Okay, so let's go, give us some basic information. What kind of power we've got, what kind of weight we've got, and uh, I know you got a good price point on it. Folks, these, uh, these videos last a long time. You're going to contact the factory for more information, but get us in the ballpark on all of those things. Okay. It's 170 pounds, 100 horsepower, and $8,000. Okay, well, <laughs> that's those, hard are to all, beat. those are basic good numbers, and that's a very low price on an engine. That's because you're using automotive technologies as the starting point? Absolutely. Um, Rotax just sold their 50,000th engine. That's a huge number of engines. Um, Suzuki probably sells that many in a month. <laughs> You're right. In both cases, it's a fine performance by Rotax, but yes, the car companies are making a lot of stuff. So, But how much do you have to change it, maybe in percentage, not the detail of everything you do, but you're getting, a, you said, a long block. Tell me what that means, and then tell me what you do to change that. Well, the, the actual mechanical engine, we don't change that much. Um, we do use a different profile camshaft uh, within the head. This one has the heavier crank and the stronger crank. Uh, okay. uh, most of this version sold in this country actually had the lighter crank, which is great. In, in automobile great. applications? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, this engine, this long block and that crankshaft is used in the 90 horsepower uh, Suzuki outboard. Okay. And they get about four to 5,000 hours in commercial use on wow. those outboards. Yeah, and I can't imagine they're taken as well care of as we tend to in aviation, so that's really saying something. Yes. What kind of TVO would this engine have in an aviation application? Right now, 1,500 hours, and we will sell a brand new long block uh, for $1,700. Wow, okay. So, so almost why bother so when you, Yeah, <laughs> when you get to that point, you're just going to swap out the big part and go back in the air again. Absolutely. And where are you out of, Mark? How would someone uh, affect that change when that time came? Well, um, we're out of Stewart, Florida. Okay. We've actually um, shipped long blocks to uh, all over the world. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the last one we shipped was to Cyprus. Of all places. So you're selling these not just in the United States, but you're the supplier of this engine and, and sending it all over the place. Yes. And uh, how many have you got flying these days? Right now we only have three flying that we know of. Okay. Um, and they're all in weight shift trikes at this time. Oh, is that right? Okay, so that's a, that's a statement in and of itself. A weight shift trike is a particular vehicle that's got to keep its weight down as much as possible. Yep. Uh, your weight is a little bit higher than, let's say, an equivalent Rotax engine, but uh, you're, what are you gaining for that extra weight? Well, um, first off, we're not really that much higher. You know, Rotax weight doesn't include the radiator, the oil tank. Oh, your and number is a complete number. Then. Our, ours includes our radiator, our fuel pumps, our ECU. Exhaust. Um, our header. Uh, not the the rest of the exhaust system. That's kind of airplane specific. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. 
Um, so you're gaining also, compared to their carbureted engine, we're about 25% less fuel consumption. Oh, okay. Kind of equivalent more to their fuel injector. Okay. And so what kind of fuel burn would this engine have? Well, the specific is, the, at the best point, is three, sorry, 0.39 pounds per horsepower per hour. Okay, um, and what does that translate to in gallons per hour that a pilot can appreciate? Uh, about four and a half gallons an hour okay. at uh, normal high cruise. Yeah, you're pretty competitive then on, on a gallon per hour basis. Yeah, the trike people... At high cruise, you at said, high too. Cruise. Okay. The trike people usually run about two, two and a half gallons an hour. Oh, really? Okay. Well, the lighter vehicle, so they can uh, back off, and at that point, uh, the engine will probably last a little longer, too, I'm guessing. I would guess so. If you're not pushing it quite so hard. So, what kind of RPM do you get all out on this thing? The rated horsepower RPM is 5,800 RPM, and the propeller is turning 2450 at that RPM. Okay. So, again, your similar numbers. Now, there's a lot of pilots that fly Lycoming, Continental, Navy Jabiru, and some other brands. Uh, that are just used to numbers in the high 2,000, low 3,000 range. Rotax has pretty much changed the equation on that yes. by doing higher numbers. But well, if it proves itself in a, in, a, in a marine world, I'm guessing it probably could do pretty well in an aviation world. Yes. Uh, we've also shipped over 100 for airboat use. Ah, okay. Well, that's yeah. another uh, hard use <laughs> application, so, so yes. that's saying something too. So you're going to be a home builder, uh, a delight to some people because of the price, and they're going to want to have more information because home builders learn the detail of things very well and need a lot of questions answered. What we've answered here, we, we, what we've asked and you answered are just touching the top of the iceberg. Where can we find you on the web, Mark, to get more information? Well, aeromomentum.com is our web address. Most of the information is there, and if not, um, contact us. They can us. find you through the web and yep. ask you some individual questions. Yep, no problem. Excellent. Lots of aviation engines, aircraft, all kinds of things you can find on my website. That's bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mark Kettering and myself here at AirVenture.